computer. All right, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, Director Brown, how you doing? I am doing amazing with all of the, uh, you got the picture of everybody that showed up on Super Bowl Sunday. I'm saying these here. are the committed. What do you, yes. these are the committed ones. Let, let me get this snapshot. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. I love it. I love it. Let me just see. Nope. Wait a minute. There we go. I got it. I got it. So this is week six, y'all. This is the last meeting of our boot camp. I'm so sad, but excited at the same time. And we have a lot to cover. Um, so let's jump right into it. But at the end, we do want to hear from each of you. Um, so here's what I need y'all to do. Oops, Director Brown. Mm -hmm. We need them to show us their DMO calendar of activity for the last two weeks. So here's what I want y'all to do. And actually, Director Brown, if you could go into our Facebook group mm -hmm. and uh, do a post that says, show us your DMO calendar for the last two weeks of February. So Got we it. want to see what you, what does your calendar look like for the last two weeks of February going forward? Because at this point, you should have your DMO. Matter of fact, you should have your calendar laid out for March with all of your activities. So we want you to take a picture, show us the last two weeks of February, what your DMO is going to look like, and then you're going to post it in the comments of the post that Director Brown is going to do and pin, all right? Um, now, everyone should have, or you're still in the middle of doing the PBR. Did anybody have a PBR and how did it go? Was it your first one that you did? Who wants to speak about it? Actually, I'm gonna pick on Leroy first. <laughs> well, mine was, uh, I did mine on Saturday morning. It was actually, I had to schedule for Saturday one place. It was actually pouring out rain. And I got the call on Friday afternoon heading to Valdosta. And they told me I couldn't do it at that place. So I had to think of my feet real fast. Called another place. And they was like, yeah, come on, you can do it here. Because I knew the guy already. And on Saturday, I uh, hooked up everything, made sure everything was working. Went back home, got the cakes and everything, set the place up. And when it was time for me to do it, nobody showed up. It was just the guy that ran the place and my friend that came with me to help me set up. Mm -hmm. So I still did the presentation, but I learned one thing. The same, the same type of TV, let me slow down. The same type of TV that I had, he had the same TV hanging up in the place. So when I went back to start everything, when I hit the, uh, to turn my TV on, his TV went off. And then when his TV went off, my TV came back on and I was connected to his TV. Instead of being connected to mine, I couldn't get a oh video to play. So I'm like, what the world's going on? He said, hold on, you control my TV. I said, okay, let's, let's start over. We turned both TVs off. I finally got the video going. Everything ran smooth. I ran the video. They looked at it. Everybody watched it. We ate cake and stuff. And everything went well. So just, just let you know, it don't take, you don't have to have a whole crowd of people to run the show. But That's we true. had three people, just like the Bible said, with two or three of gas days in the there midst. You go. I yeah. was with it because it worked. So That's good. That's good. My first one real well. Excellent. Excellent. And that's what it is. It's about getting that first one out the way. Because now I can say, Leroy, did you die from having to step out of your comfort zone? Of course not, right? But now that you know what's all involved in setting up a PBR, now you're able to say, okay, yeah, I could do these, you know, either weekly or at a minimum twice a month because you know what to do, what's involved. And now you know you need to work on your inviting skills, right? Um, but I love the fact that you had some challenges, but you able you were able to push forward and get it done. So kudos to you. That's awesome. Director Brown, you want to speak on that? Yes. So even when he um, called me, so he was still prepared. He was still, what I loved is that he was still in great spirits. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes people call you and they down and out. Nobody showed up. Oh, Lord, it's 
this the worst day ever. Leroy was still excited. He was like, listen, ain't nobody here. I got three people, but that's all right. I'm going to play this video. We got a whole bunch of cake because Leroy made cake. So he said, we got this cake. We're going to eat this cake and we still going to have a good time. And I'm going to share this information. So I love the fact that he still stayed positive. And when yeah. you stay positive, that helps because it just makes you look at things in a positive light versus if you beat yourself up and now you having all these thoughts that you did something wrong and all of that just stay positive. And like Leroy said, one or two, three or four, <laughs> he still was going to run that show and get it done. So I loved it. I love that. And I want y'all to write this down. If you're taking notes, Mr. Bradley's famous words, nothing rattles, nothing rattles. When things start going crazy, you just say nothing rattles. You, you don't let it take you out of your emotion, take you out of your character you don't let it frazzle you. You just, nothing rattles. You just do what you got to do, execute and get it done. Plain and simple. I love it. I love it. Anybody else have their PBR? Norma? Hi, good evening, everyone. So yes, I did have my first one ever. Thank God. <laughs> it, I partnered up with the Maris down here and um. Michelle Thompson, their um, Damaris is Michelle's um, business partner, which become my business partner because I sponsored um, Michelle, and it was awesome just having somebody else to partner up with to do it together because I probably would have lost my mind <laughs> if I had to do it all by myself. I know I would be calm at some point, but I know I would be losing losing my mind doing the whole course. But it was really a smooth smooth transition because I talked to director Brown to find out some of the things that you know we would need there and you guys um, laid out a lot of the information that we needed the only challenge that we really did have because me Michelle and Damaris we went shopping at Walmart we we uh, will figure out how to airdrop things uh, air, airdrop things in Walmart to, to if anybody else want to come around and stuff like that so it, it was a nice adventure it was an adventure for us too it was nice so you know me, I love, uh, I'm silly like that. So anyways, when we get there and uh, we have everything ready to go, the TV, <laughs> the TV did not want to be friendly. It did not want us to be great. So it's a good thing nobody was there because we already figured it, it played on my TV and everything. And then we thought, oh, this is a nice, big, smart TV. It will work. It did not work so i had to go back and get my tv from my house when i bring it to my their place it did not work <laughs> oh my goodness so we had to youtube the big picture and that's how it, it started working because she tried to airdrop it it wasn't the, the the it was the sound was there but the picture wasn't there so wow. it was youtube we youtube it and it came up and we just used a, a jp watkins video that she did the presentation and it was the bomb so I'm glad that we did it. We had four people there. And I don't want to tell all the story because the mirrors has to talk. <laughs> so I'm going to shut up now. But well, it was good. I'm so glad that you guys took me out of my comfort zone. So we are planning to do one every month. Excellent. Excellent. Damaris, so how did it go once you got the JP Watkins version playing? Um, it was good. They were interested. Um, we had a couple of ladies asking questions. Um, I felt a little bit more relaxed. Um, I, I learned a I was little gonna bit say, more. What did you learn from everything, from the whole experience? I, I, I'm still a nervous wreck. <laughs> I have an amazing team. Mm -hmm. And they are there for me when I am stuck. So I know that if I can't do it, my back won't have them have my back. That's so. good. That's good. That's good. I love that. Uh, again, you were faced with challenges and you said, okay, guess what? Nothing rattles. We're going to figure this out. That's, that's what it comes down to. That's what leaders do. We, we can't fold under pressure. We have to, you know, find a way to make it work. I love that you found a workaround. She, I mean, she, this woman went home and got her TV and it still did. didn't work. And she said, okay, we got to figure out how to do this. And would you have YouTube? 
There's always a way to win. All way. Just like tonight. For some reason, my iMac will not let me log on to Facebook to stream. And I'm like, okay, so how else can I get to? Okay, just record it on Zoom and then upload it later. There's always a way to win, especially with technology. So you can't be afraid of technology. You just have to be smarter than yes. the technology. Correct, correct. Director Brown, what you want to add to that? Yes, I wanted to add that. So, you know, we advise everyone to have a director, a leader, somebody on standby that can be called in to close your guests out. But we also advise you guys to have backup, to have some other people that you know you can call and lean on. So on Saturday, I had my Super Saturday here in Rochester. And you know, there's always the meeting after the meeting, Tanisha. Yeah. And so I knew that I was going to be there a little late. I also had to assist Leroy. There was other people I had to assist with their parties. And so when Norma texts me, I was just finishing up helping someone else. And so I text her back maybe five minutes later to say I'm available. And she said, no worries, Director White is taking care of it. So I love that they had that backup plan. They reached out to another director and I don't know if Michelle is on, but Michelle also MTG'd. Nice. Their Good job, Michelle. That yes. is awesome. That is awesome. Uh, let's go to Josephine. Good evening, everyone. So um, I have done a PBR before. Actually, I have done two, mm -hmm. but I did it at another business partner's home. So this time around, it was the first time doing it at my home. And I basically, my daughters and I, we just put everything out of the living room into the back rooms. And I, I was amazed on how huge my living room actually is. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I think I can fit 20 and odd people in here. Wow. But, <laughs> but it was excited to see that. Um, I did partner with um, Natisha, mm -hmm. which was amazing. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have any guests. Everyone just like went cricket on me. I did have some people confirm, but there was a no show, but that's okay. The show still went on. And um, Natisha, she had two guests. Mm -hmm. um, we had so much, so, so many things to eat. Well, we had a fruit salad. We had um, sausages and cracker platter. We had water and it was only two people to eat all this stuff. <laughs> so I did tell Natisha next time we do it, we'll just have a confirmation and then we'll plan in terms of the meal because then we just wasted money, you know, but it didn't get wasted. We ate it all up. We did. <laughs> um, <laughs> but this was a great experience. And like I stated in the chat, um, you know, I did this before at someone else's home and doing it in my home was amazing. And I will definitely do this again. Definitely. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So let me say this. Do not have food. It's not necessary. Yeah. Yeah. I was telling the teacher the same thing. I'm like, you know, when I go to the opportunity meetings, we, we have water. That's it. <laughs> Just have water. You don't want people yeah. coming to your house for food. Um, and you don't want the food to be a distraction. You just want to have water. They should be there to get the information and be in and out. In and out, 60 minutes or less, in and out. And when you add food, number one, it drags the process out. And again, you end up having people come for the wrong reasons. And it's money that doesn't need to be spent. It really doesn't. Director Brown, you want to speak on that? Yep. And it, it for one, we don't really know how many guests we're going to have. And I think for a lot of people, for their first travel party, even though I tell people, do not go all out. The whole purpose is to give them the information. That's all we doing. But people get excited, especially for your first one, and they want to go all out. So I remember I had um, two of my business partners that teamed up together and they did a travel party. And when I say they had wings and pizza and cake and drinks and candy and cookies and oh cupcakes and so much stuff. But in the end, they were like, I wish I would have listened to you because we did not need to get all this stuff. So like you said, Josephine, when you go to the opportunity meetings, it is water, water. And our goal is to give you this information. That's it. Maybe a mint, a peppermint. 
M- maybe, maybe. Because, you know, you're going to be talking to people. You want to have fresh bread. You want them that you can offer them a mint if they don't have fresh bread. But that's it. Yeah. That's it. And here's the other thing. Having all that food and stuff is not duplicatable. What do I mean by that? Let's say you have a guest. They do sign up because they like the information or whatever. Now they're going to give you pushback on them having their first PBR because they're like, maybe they don't have the money to be able to go spend, you know, 60, 70, 80 bucks at Publix on wings and cheese platters and stuff. Because now they think that that's what it was supposed to be. And then, and then you have leaders like me saying, you should be doing a travel party every week. And they're like, I can't spend that kind of money every week. I need y'all to listen. There's a reason why we tell y'all to do a certain thing a certain way. Just have bottled water. That's it. This is not the time for you to show your cooking skills. This is not the the time to show your artistry with your charcuterie boards. And I got several. I took a class and everything. It's not duplicatable. But anybody can have bottled water. Because guess what? Most of y'all probably have bottled water anyway. You ain't even have to go out. I don't have none, I don't do none of that at my house. You coming to get the information, then I want you out. Not hanging around eating my food and, and then I gotta clean up all of, I, I don't want, I don't want to have to do all that work. And I'm doing it every week. Just bottled water. That's it. That's it. Just bottled water. This is a business presentation. It's not a launch party. You know how when somebody has a new, they drop a new album, they have a party, a champagne and balloon. This ain't that. It is a business presentation. Get the information, make a decision. You ain't got to go home, but you got to get out of here. Director Brown, you want to add to that? That's it, y'all. And like I said, a lot of people, you just get excited because it's your first one and you just want it to be perfect. And you like, what else can I add? Let's do this. Let's do that. But you don't even need to. And another thing, y'all, if you have food, people ain't paying attention. They're not even going to be paying attention because they're too busy eating and snacking and key keying, and they are not going to be paying attention. And if it's heavy food, now they really not because now they're tired and they sluggish. So you got pizza and wings and all that. Don't do it, y'all. Don't do it. Just water. Don't say we didn't tell y'all. Right. Here's the other thing. Do not, and Mr. Moore talked about this. Do not combine some other event with a business presentation. Let me tell you what just happened. So one of my business partners, business partners has a friend and you know she piqued her interest about the business. And she's like, oh, well, why don't we just, I'm having a birthday party for my son. You know, why don't we just combine it? I already knew it was a no-go. I already knew it was not gonna be good, but I said, you know what? Sometimes you can show people better than you can tell them. And and as a leader, again, we want to coach, train, and develop. So sometimes we got to let y'all do, you know, make your mistakes so that you learn why we don't do certain things. So the birthday party is supposed to start at five. And I said, okay. And, and, and this young lady is supposed to sign up. I kept saying, get her to sign up on, on Monday. I think we spoke on Monday or Tuesday. I was like, let's sign her up now before I get there for the party. But no, no, no. The lady was like, not the business partner, the the prospect was like, no, no, I want to wait until I said, okay, now listen, I'm going to be there at four. We need to start promptly at five because I got to be out there, out of there because I had another engagement afterwards. I'm not here for this birthday party. I'm here for business, right? So we get there at four o'clock. And what do you think? Everything, anybody here Puerto Rican ever been to a Puerto Rican party? Y'all know how the Puerto Ricans do. Those are my peoples. Listen, my goddaughter's Puerto Rican. It's the rice and beans, it's the chicken, it's the cake, it's the everything, everything, right? And then the, the grandma's there, the cousins there. Damaris, you know what I'm talking about, right? The uncles are there, right? The kids, they got the bounce house. People are coming in and out. The phone is ringing and I'm just sitting there like, 
I knew this was going to happen. So I pull out my laptop and I'm like, okay, we're going to, let's enroll this, uh, you know, prospect now before, and, you know, even more people come or whatever. Come to find out she ain't prepared to sign up because she done spent all this money on this birthday party. So now we got to push her. I already knew this was all going to happen. So I'm cool because nothing rattles. I'm just like, okay, whatever, I'm here. So then now it's it's like uh, just, I don't know, we're getting ready to start the presentation. Now, mind you, when I sit, when I meet the, the prospect and in my mind, because this is what the business partner tell me, you know, she's going to be ready to sign up or whatever. She hadn't even watched the video. You're going to sign up for something and you haven't even, oh, well, I was doing, my, having my nails done. I was trying to watch the video, but it, you know, it cut out. I'm just like, oh my God. So now I give her like a brief business overview or whatever, you know, and I was like, well, you know, you and your husband will be able to see the presentation when we start or whatever. So now I, I start the presentation and I'm doing a big picture video and I'm like, at least now I can show her, you know, what this is about. But now she gets a phone call from a guest that's supposed to be on the way or whatever. So she gets up on her phone. She's welcome. She wasn't even there for the presentation. I said, okay. I'm cool. Because I'm like, nothing rattles. There's a couple of people there. Another business partner brought some friends. So, you know, I do what I do. Answer the questions or whatever. Like, you want something to eat? Sure, I'm here. I might as well get something to eat. Get some rice and beans, some chicken, you know. Okay, a piece of cake, a piece of cake, and then boom, I'm out. Will I say it was a total waste? No, because I came and I did business. And now at least the prospect knows I can't. I did what I said I was going to do. And she dropped the ball. She's the one to look bad. I didn't look bad. I did what I was supposed to do. But do not, just make a note, y'all. Do not try to combine a business presentation with some other event because their mind is on the event, not on business. You got, when you're ready to, to make a business decision, you got to be focused on just that. She's focused on her son's birthday party, which is what she should have been focused on. So I'm not mad that she wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. However, it was very disrespectful of my time. We could have made that a Zoom and saved me the gas. Her focus was on what it should have been, her son's birthday. It was a family event. And again, if you don't know anything about Puerto Rican parties, it's a big deal. All family comes, it's all about the food, they got the... And then the music is playing. I'm trying to do a presentation. They got the music playing. I'm just like, this is not what I do. Director Brown, you want to speak on that? Listen, it's, it's definitely a party. I love my Puerto Rican parties. But um, mm -hmm. that is true. But one of the things I want to point out is that Director Burke advised her, you know, let's not do it on this day because she already knew. And I think sometimes in these situations, sometimes you guys are just so, I guess, thirsty, we'll say, to get this person to sign up. And you may be pushing the person to do it on that day. And what Director Burke, she was saying, no, let's not do it this day because you have all this stuff going on, but they were, you know, wanting to do it because like she said, they're not going to be fully focused on it. I remember I had someone last Christmas, I've had people sign up on Christmas, but I always advise them, we can do it tomorrow. We can do it the day after it's Christmas, you with your family, you know, whatever the case is. And I had this lady was so adamant. Nope, this is my Christmas gift. I'm doing it today. So she's all the way in Vegas. So I didn't have to drive or go to her, but I still took the time out to get on Zoom with her, to talk with her. She had people all in the background. She kept having to tell me, okay, hold on, be right back. And I'm like, we can do this tomorrow. You don't have to do this today. No, no, no. I want to do it today. And so it, was, it wasn't fully a waste of time 
but she wasn't super focused because I'm still trying to get the ball rolling out. Soon as you sign up, I'm ready to start getting stuff going, give you the steps that I want you to do. But she was not focused on that. And it was still maybe three days after that I was finally able to get her to sit down and focus on what we needed to do. So definitely don't mix two different things. If they got something going on, let's do it tomorrow. Let's do it another day because they're not going to be focused on it. Right. Which takes me to the next point. Make sure you do, you control your business and don't let other people control how you do business. Make sure. For me, like I said, I already knew how this was going to go down. For me, I move forward with it more so as a lesson for the business partners because that now they got, because they were, they were kind of embarrassed. I know they, I felt, I felt that they felt that they were embarrassed that, you know, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I just wasted my director's time. This woman wasn't ready to sign up. They got the music and the people. And I mean, I was cool about it. It was more of a lesson for them, but I already knew how it was going to go down. So now they know as well. So I, I wouldn't say that it was a waste of time at all, but, and I always believe you never lose, you learn. And so for them, they definitely learn now, like, okay, next time somebody is pushing, oh, let's combine this with that. Now my business partners will know, no, 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 we, we ain't, that's not the way I do business. We will schedule this for another day when we could focus on business. So it was, it was, it was a good experience um, for them. Uh, Devoris, I see you said you had your PBR. Tell us about it. Devoris, did she step away? All right, we'll come back to her. I'm sorry, here I come. Okay, there you go. Um, yes, I did have it. Um, I, one person showed up. The Beverly and myself, we did it together. Mm -hmm. We ended up doing it. Uh, she was one, she said she was gonna do it at her place, but we ended up doing it at a Panera Bread in the space of the Panera Bread. Mm -hmm. And it, it turned out okay. I uh, it turned out good. Um, I had was able to get director um Delma Adams to close it out for us. We did play the video, we did play the video, and um she has and she has an interest in it, so we'll see. I just keep her um I'll keep her engaged. I'll keep up with her. You know, um, she's actually my girlfriend's daughter. Okay. Uh, and so what I want to do is I really want to get in her into her circle. Okay. We <laughs> so it was way of be, yes, it was my way of into of uh, just exposing her to because she didn't never really knew what I did. Okay. But um, she has an interest in it, but I'm definitely gonna keep up with it now. Like I said, I want to get in her circle. Um, she's a, a a young mom. She's a mom, a young mom. She's two kids married and she's like a millennial so okay so you know your next step will be tell her that you want to introduce her to the founder of the company and get her to that tuesday meeting in atlanta exactly so i did tell her about that and so i am going to uh, she lives in fayetteville and she doesn't really have a car so the next time i'm out this way i'm gonna I'm a, that's my next goal mm -hmm. to get her to a meeting yeah yep. you gotta go pick her up and bring her so yep. i, I want to introduce you to my mentor, Mr. Moore, and I want to introduce you to the founder of the company. If she's a millennial, now you have an opportunity to introduce her to a Natalie Graham. So it's all about introducing her to the leaders. It's not about her seeing the meeting or the presentation. She already seen that. Say, I want to introduce right. you to Good. some of the people that I'm working with. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Good job, divorce. Anybody else do their PBR? Director Brown, do you want to add to that? What I do love is how uh, Devoris mentioned how she wants to get into that circle. Because I, I immediately think about um, Anaya Sanders. If you guys saw the, uh, what was the last Tuesday, Mr. Morris team meeting, the one star, the youngest one star director, 19 years old, college student. So these individuals have a large network of people. So even if this person that Devoris had at her event does not get started, if she can get into her circle and get connected with the people that she's connected with, that could be that could be big because the millennials they they know 
a lot of people, especially if you're in college on that college campus, you have access to so many people. So I love that that's where Devora's mind went and absolutely being in Atlanta and being able to get her introduced to those other leaders, that alone will help her to shift her mind. So let's go from, I'm interested to, yeah. I, I I <laughs> right, I need to do this, absolutely. See, Michelle has her hand up. Good evening, Director, Bur okay. Director Brown and everyone. Um, I did do my PBR with Norma and Damaris. Mm -hmm. And I invited like a lot of my family members, like at least close to 10 of them, maybe eight, maybe seven or eight of them, mm -hmm. but no one um, was available. Mm -hmm. um, so my cousin, Ariana is my cousin and I, she's been watching me in this for a while now, like almost since the beginning. Like she was the first one to support me on my, when I first invited her to a Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, and I reached out to her on Thursday and said, look, I'm going to have uh, my first PBR on Saturday. I would like to see, I want to invite you to come out. And she said, okay, she would get back to me. But I hadn't heard from her. So I reached out to her. She came. She said she was coming and she ended up com coming. And then um, another friend of mine came. But I didn't expect for Ariana to sign up because I just was like, at this point, I just wanted support mm -hmm. of people who know know me and know what I'm doing. And she's been following mostly everything that I do on social media. And um, so when she decided that she wanted to start, she 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 had already been talking about starting for over a month now. This was like a couple of months back. She was like, um, I want to start. She because she already seen the full presentation on Zoom. Then I asked her if she had any questions. I said I can get you on in a three way with one of um the leaders, one of our leaders. And she was like, um, oh, maybe next week. And this was about two three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And then um she came to the PBR. And she ended up talking, not even, she actually was the one who had absolutely no questions when um, Director White asked if there was any more questions. She didn't have any more questions. And then she just said, I'm going to sign up. <laughs> and I was like, you are? <laughs> so it was really a surprise to me. I was just happy that I had the support there. Right. And so I wasn't even thinking about anybody really signing up. <laughs> uh huh. So it was, it was I was... I was really surprised, but <clears throat> excuse me, but it was a really um, great experience. I did learn a lot. Good. And um, Director White was so awesome in answering all of our questions and making sure everyone was clear. Mm -hmm. And so I, I really enjoyed the PBR. That's good. So now you ready to do your next one? I am looking forward to doing the next one. Good, yeah. good. <laughs> and, and most people, well, again, here's the thing. When people are ready, they're ready. You can't mm -hmm. say the wrong thing to the right person or the right thing to the wrong person. She was just ready. She had already been watching. It was just her time. It was just right. her time. So and I and I was like, okay. <laughs> but she's a millennial. She's a millennial. So I'm really grateful to have her on my team because mm -hmm. she helps me a lot. And, and so I feel like it's it's a great thing. So yeah. Now you <laughs> want to do her launch, her PBR live, so she can invite her people. Right. You're going to start seeing, start seeing it take off, but that's, that's really good. Director Brown, you want to add to that? I love that she was not expecting her to sign up. Not only was she not expecting her to sign up, she just invited her just to have somebody there because she didn't think she was going to sign up. And so that made me think of how sometimes we don't share this opportunity with our friends. Now, in this case, Michelle has shared it with her, but mm -hmm. sometimes we don't share the opportunity with family and friends because we just assume that they're not going to do it, or we assume that they're not going to support us. And sometimes those people that we think that of they end up being the people that support you. They end up being the people that partner with you. So do not take any family or friends off of your list. You're sharing this with all of them before somebody else do it. Mm -hmm. So you don't see them post their banner on their page and you like, how come you ain't partner with me? You never asked me. You never shared it with me. You don't want that to happen. So anybody that you, for whatever reason, think they won't get started, they are sometimes the people that absolutely will get started. May not be right away, but eventually they will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And let me say this, 
work on adding value to your invitation. So anytime you think of somebody's name that you want to invite next to their name, think about how can this business help them? And that is what you want to write next to their name. If they love to travel, then next to their name, put loves to travel. So that when you invite them, you're saying, listen, I'm having a, a private business presentation. I'm only inviting a few people that I know could benefit from this information. And I thought of you because you love to travel. And so I'm going to share some information on how you can travel better. Can I count on you to be there or should I cross you off my list? So you have to write down next to their name, how can this business benefit them? If they're already a, a successful entrepreneur, put that next to their name. If they need extra income, put that next to their name. If they're coming up close to retirement, put that next to their name. If they have a, a great personality and a great network, put that next to their name. And then when you're inviting them, say, I thought of you because, and whatever it is, that now people are coming because it benefits them as opposed to, oh, I'm just coming to support you. That's not a reason for people to stop what they're doing and come out to support you. As I said before, nobody cares that you have a business. That's not the kind of support that you want. Like, I just want a warm body in the room. That's a waste of time for everybody. Nobody wins just from having a warm body in the room. So Michelle, it's more of, I'm inviting you because I'm doing you a favor. I already made the decision to win. I'm trying to help you out. That has to be your mindset. Not, oh, I just want to have somebody support me. No, that's a waste of everybody's time, including the, the leader that you want to answer the questions. You understand what I'm saying? So you got to posture up and say, I'm inviting you because I want to help you with you got two kids working three jobs. I want to help you because you hate your job. I hear you complain about it all the time. I'm trying to help you get out of the job. Just for the record, I didn't tell her that, even though no, I, I know. That. No, but it's your, it, no, <laughs> but, but in my mind, yes. That's what I'm saying. Right. You got to change your mindset. You, okay. you got to change your mindset because remember, you attract who you are. So if the energy that you're putting out is, well, I just want you to come to kind of support me, then their energy that they're receiving is, well, I'm just going to go just to support her. Mm -hmm. Not, man, this could, this could change my life. Let me go get this information. Because she's right. I, I am sick of working three jobs or I do hate my job or I would like to be able to afford a house and get out my mama's house or I, I do need to you know pay off these debts or whatever. Remember, you're doing, I need all of y'all to think, I'm doing them a favor, doing me a favor by showing up. I already made the decision. I'm already using the business. I already said yes and using this business opportunity to change my life. I'm trying to help them. That's where your posture has to be. You cannot have weak posture because what we have is so strong. So when you're talking to people, say, listen, I got something that can help you with whatever it is they need help with. And if you approach them that way, now, now they have a true uh, reason, incentive to show up because it's something that's going to help them, not them supporting you. Nobody should be showing up just because they, listen, I don't want my neighbors, when I invite them to my PBR on Wednesday nights, I don't want them showing up just to support me. That is a waste of my time. I could be sitting on the couch watching Netflix. I want them to come because they're looking for a life change and I got some information that's going to help them. Josephine, I saw you had your hand up. I was just going to quickly mention that um, I love that um, Michelle talked about how her cousin was watching her. Imagine if she was not, if Michelle was not being consistent with her content on exactly. Facebook and all her social media. So consistency is so important because you, because they're watching, even though they may not like, comment, but they are watching you all the time. Yes, they so are. Congratulations again, Michelle. Yes, congratulations. That is awesome. Thank all right. You. So we have a couple of things that um, we want to make sure that you all have a note of. 
make sure you identify three people that can do three-way calls. Three outside of your director. So your director, that's a given. That's a given. Three other experts that can do three-way calls. And if you don't know who those three people are, reach out to your director and say, can you please give me three people that I should utilize for three-way calls in the event that you're not available? And make sure you have the edification of those three people. So you may need to call them and say, hey, I have you listed. You know, my, my director gave me your name and number for three-way calls. I just wanna make sure that I have your edification in case I ever need to reach out to you. Okay, any questions about that? Director Brown, you wanna to add to that? Yes, um, me and Norma actually just had this conversation. Was it today? I'm losing track of, I, I think it was today. <laughs> me and Norma had this conversation today where um, she wanted to just clarify that she had the right people. She had those right three people based on my opinion as her director, who those people should be. And so even when, what I told her is even when I'm bringing in new business partners, I tell them if I am not available, I give them those three people. These are the three people that I want you to contact if I am not available, because we have this list, right? And if we just go and tag somebody in the list, they they don't, it's a long list. There's a lot of people on there and they could be confused about who they should contact, who they should reach out to. So I always tell them, me, I'm your first person. If I am not available, here's your three people that you are going to go to afterwards. So make sure that you guys have that list so that's gonna make it easier for you. So if your director isn't available, you're not stressed out, worried about, well, what do I do? Who should I call? Because you already have three more people lined up that you know you are going to reach out to if your director is not available. Absolutely. And they may not be directors. Some of them might be goal builders, mm -hmm. which is a good thing because sometimes us directors, we're all at some type of retreat or meeting or whatever. So yep. you have that, those goals, but, and make sure you know what is their preferred method of contact. Some of them may have an online calendar. Some of them may prefer that you um, either call them or text them. So make sure you have that information as well. Um, sign up instructions. Does everybody have the sign up instructions? Yes. Does anybody not have the sign up instructions. You know, what's actually so funny, Tanisha, is at the Super Saturday here, someone asked me, they said, I saw in the list of topics for boot camp that we're going to go over the sign up instructions. Did I miss that? Because I haven't seen that topic come up. So, perfect timing. Right, so I am going to pull up the sign up instructions. Uh, no, where do I have it? I have it under here. And these are just ones that I typed out, by the way. These are not, Planet Marketing doesn't have it or anything like that. Again, these are just the ones that I have. And these are posted in the 40 days, 40 nights group. Um, so anytime I have someone that I am enrolling in the business, the first thing I send them is the sign up instructions. And then I send them my link. Why do I send them the sign up instructions? Because I want them to have it for when they go to sign up their first business partner. Even though I'm going to be there to walk them through it, I want them to have it. So here are the step-by-steps. Um, notice number five says, select the $20.95 option. I don't give people the option or the choice to get the mobile app. Of course not. Automatically, they're going to get it. You know the value of the mobile app. So they don't even have a choice with me. You're going to get the mobile app because you need it for your business. Right? And then the other uh, important part, number 10, 
Once completed, you will receive four emails, one from Planet Marketing with your website, username and password, two from Customer Service and IntelliTravel with your website, login and agent credentials, and lastly, one from Paylution with instructions on setting up your director. I go through all of that with them. Some of you aren't even talking about the emails that they should be receiving. The emails end up in the person's spam folder and they have no clue what to do with their business. And whose fault is that? Yours. Because we want to show people what to do and not just tell them what to do. Anything you want to add to that, Director Brown? I froze for a minute. Just that those emails, I definitely make sure immediately after they've signed up to check their email to see that they have received those because I don't want to get to, and I want you to go onto the website and to start to look at the things there. I don't want to get to our onboarding the next day and then you can't find the email. You realize you don't, you didn't get it. I just had someone that she did her email address wrong. So when I told her to check her email to see if she received it, she was like, I don't have anything. I'm like, okay, check your spam. It wasn't there. I said, okay, we're going to call and teletravel and come to find out she put a, a, a extra period or something in her email address. But had we gotten all the way to the day of onboarding and I'm trying to walk her through the websites and then she realized she can't get in. Now we got to stop. We got to call and teletravel to get it fixed. So as soon as you get started, I'm having you to check your email to verify that you have received those four emails. So definitely do that, you guys. Absolutely. And when they're when they're um, enrolling in Planet Marketing, I always tell people, let me know when you get to the part for username and password. Mm -hmm. I always tell them to let me know once they get there. And so when they get there, I always tell them, make your username, your first and last name, all lowercase, no spaces because they're going to have to give that username to someone else that's going to enroll with them. So you don't want it to be something crazy. Baby boo boo 26. No, that's not your, use. no, just make it your first and last name, please. Let's keep it simple. Right. And then I always tell them, write down your username and your password. And they'll always say, oh, I know what it is. I use this. No, listen to what I'm telling you. I want you to grab a notebook, write down planet marketing, user name and password, because in this business, especially once you get to the travel side, you are going to have a ton of usernames and passwords. And my biggest pet peeve is when people don't know their passwords. So I'm telling you now to write it down. I have this conversation with everybody and inevitably somebody, Director Brown doesn't write it down. And here we are trying to do their orientation. And now we've been spending 15 minutes them having to reset their password because they didn't follow instructions because they were uncoachable. So right. that's usually going to be the first lesson about being coachable versus not being coachable. Anything you want to add to that, Director Brown? Amazing how quickly people forget. Like they could have just signed up and that already they forgot when I, what password did I use? I'm like, oh Lord, how did you forget your password that fast? So please, please write it down. Absolutely. Right. And you got to remember too, they're getting so much information. There is no way they're going to remember the password. And I always let them know as well, when they say that they use the same one, I said, yeah, but in this industry, the suppliers make you change it every few months. So you going to remember all of them? not going to happen. Trust me when I tell you. <laughs> um, and again, and we spoke about this in another boot camp training, make sure your prospect is signing up themselves. Because if that IP address is different from one state to the next, they live in New York, but you signing them up from Florida, it's not, that account's going to get flagged. They must sign up themselves on their own devices where they are at that moment. Very, very, very important, all right? So that these accounts don't get flagged. Um, Director Brown, that was all of our notes. So we are officially at the end of boot camp. And so what Director Brown and I want to do now is to 
hear from each of you. Director Brown, what do you want to know from each of them? Where they were when they started, you know, mentally, you know, how you were feeling at that time versus how you feel now and what you've learned and how it's helped you. Sad that this is like our last boot camp meeting. Like, I'm gonna miss y'all. I feel like we've all got to know each other. Mm -hmm. um, I hope that you all feel that, you know, you were able to build a better relationship with Director Brown and myself, right? Because some of you, I didn't like know you. I mean, you're on my team, but I didn't know you. We never spoke, right? And so now we got to, to hear from each other. Um, and so anyone who is watching this on the replay, we want you to go live in the boot camp group and give a testimony about how this boot camp has changed and impacted your business. But for those of you that are on the Zoom right now, we're going to come around to each of you to share your boot camp testimony. And we're going to start with Aisha. <laughs> I wanted to go first. Yay. <laughs> um, this boot camp most definitely. Uh, lay a lot more things down for me. Like I didn't have a DMO and I didn't know how to plan a DMO. I, I didn't know how to organize a DMO. My schedule was too hectic. I'm a, uh, for some of you that, sorry, for some of you that don't know, I am a mobile occupational health specialist. I wake up at the earliest dawn, drive two, maybe one to two hours to the location, work from anywhere to four to nine hours. And then drive in another one or two hours somewhere else. Half the places I go is in the country with no signal. I swear I, I need to, my mom, my parents tell me to keep something with me just in case I meet any crazy people. That's how real country it is. So I usually wake up, I'm like, my mind, I overthink, like I think about everything I want to do. Morning, post, reaching out to peak of interest, and I can never organize like how to do that. Like I can never organize like when I should try to do it. I overthink it and I end up just stressing myself out and then just like say, well, I'll do it later. And later never comes. So one of the things like calendar wise, like how to organize a calendar. I have a calendar. I never put anything in it. It was completely blank. So DMO, calendar, and um just peaking interest I'm just I just need to learn how to be more confident about that which I'm working on um that that's why I called uh to know my my sergeant because she she'll get me out of that face she's like girl stop it so um <laughs> get, getting out of myself so that's what the boot camp taught me provided for me awesome awesome thank you so much for that Miss Kimberly Walker your testimony Hello, everyone. <laughs> My testimony is that um, boot camp has really made me get more organized. Um, it, it taught me a lot. Like, for instance, I just learned that the presentation doesn't have sound. <laughs> and that's after trying two different TVs, wondering why am I not hearing anything? So that was a very good exercise for me to go through that and to realize that it does work. I can go to the big picture and use that. And so um, it also gave me more confidence with um, getting no's. You know, I don't take the no's in, uh, personal at all. And so actually I, I welcome the no's because I know, okay, a yes is gonna come soon. Mm -hmm. And so um, I just wanna thank you guys because everything you've shared has been very informational and will um, I think make all of us uh, take away that I think <laughs> but make all of us um successful in our business I love it I love it I love it Felicia so I would say um when I first started I learned a lot last year by plugging in especially to coffee break mm -hmm. um I did feel that when I first started I was definitely unorganized all over the place a little bit overwhelmed and I can honestly say last year there was times where I wondered if I could actually do it or not. So the boot camp, I really appreciate you, uh, Director Burke and Director Brown. I feel a lot more settled with the processes now. Um, it's a lot more streamlined, so it's a lot quicker for me to execute and to get it done. 
and my confidence level has definitely increased. And also I've settled in my mind that I know for sure that I can do it because you guys have done it. Um, I've, I've hit some bumps in the road. I know Director Brown has gone through health issues and she has still marched on and pushed on. Um, so I know for sure that I can do it. And this boot camp really helped me really solidify that. Awesome. Love that. Love that. Leroy? Well, I've enjoyed being in boot camp um, since it's, it's almost like having a, a bunch of books or a bunch of gifts. And you know they're there. It was like a puzzle. All the pieces are there. And once once we got the boot camp, then we start putting the pieces together. And now we know how to, to do things the right way. Because like from day one, you always, okay, how am I do this? What am I supposed to do next? Okay, somebody said do it this way. Somebody said do it this way. What's the right way? Then we come to boot camp. If we've been doing this all along, we'll be a, a lot further than what we are. So I'm thankful for the boot camp. Thank you for you and uh, Director Brown. That's been a big help. And I can sleep better at night now, not worrying about a bunch of stuff since I'm organized now. So everything's a whole lot better. So thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Andrea? Okay, can you hear me? Yes. I, I have learned, um, I enjoyed the boot camp, and it has definitely stepped me uh, more out of my comfort zone um, to feel more confident in myself and to uh, do the PS3 mm -hmm. and um, just to be a little bit more organized and not be just accept the nose and not take it personal because that was a big issue. Uh, with me and um, yeah, take the nose and strive and keep pushing. I love it. I love yeah. it. And to do the travel party. Uh, I have not it. done my travel party yet, but my my goal is to this this week. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Good job, Josephine. Um, I really enjoy the boot camp, especially because it was you know, um, led by two amazing women. Um, I do um, appreciate you both. I also joined mainly because I wanted to, you know, be more of a support to my new BPs that came on, which I've been really supportive um, with them. But I really love that I, I'm more organized when it comes to my DMO. Um, and the Jappy, I'm definitely using that even more than ever now. Um, and that's really have been helping me a lot with prospects and, and just ignoring the nose as well. I also love the fact, I mean, I've been in many boot camps before, but I love that this one focused more on the planet marketing side of the business. And I really appreciate that. And thank you, ladies, again. Awesome. Thank you, Josephine. Norma? Oh, I was waiting for the last, <laughs> but I'm going to go because that was cold. So um, thank you so much, Director Burke and Director Brown. I know once Director Brown is in the mix of things, I just have to be there. I didn't want to be there because I'm like, I want to be focused and run like an horse <laughs> and heading to that momentum. But Director Brown is there. I just be like, anywhere she's at, I have to show up. So I'm yeah. glad that you guys did it. And look at that. Now I, I'm, I'm going to be doing PBRs every month. I never thought of that at all. I always said I'm going to do it, but I know I did not have the confidence to do it. But now that I see what it's like, get a, um, an ex the experience, now that I have these two ladies to help me, I'm so glad that I did it because if I didn't join it, I wouldn't be in a boot camp that tell us that we have to go do one. So one thing I can tell you, when I saw that we only had a week to do it, I was like, I'm not even going to panic. <laughs> Usually I would be like, my God, they're just giving us a week. I would usually say that this time I did not even have any qualms about it, nothing. I'm like, I'm going into it head on. And I'm glad that I've gotten out of my comfort zone to be okay with people coming in my, at my house. <laughs> and I end up still not having it at my house, but I'm just saying I'm now open and I feel much more confident and uh, I think I'll be all right. And um, I also it also helped me to change my time with prospecting. I usually like um sometimes I'll prospect throughout the day, but um now I wake up like 5 30, 6 o'clock and do my prospecting. And then I just 
start my other part of my day. So now I kind of change it up because usually during the day I, I may hit or miss getting to do it because of the fact that I have the children. But now I have that on my DMO to start it up. The moment my husband wake up, I just gone right into it because I'm not going to go back to sleep anyway. So right. I start doing that one. Now my planner, it looks like a planner. I usually just, I have the time and stuff like that. And I put it on my phone, but now I put it inside that so I can have that hard copy and I have that. Um, the one on my phone that actually made the noise for it to go off for me to hear it, the notification. And um, one other thing that I'm so grateful that I'm a part of this, the, the fact that I can now decide what to do in the next morning, like, oh, I'm going to prospect the next day. Usually I wait until the day, then I think about it. But now I'm a little bit more organized in that area. And I really appreciate so much of the fact that you guys spend and take the time out of your busy schedule knowing that we're heading into momentum to come and help us so i appreciate that thank you so much you're welcome you're welcome thank you damaris she's like one of these is the uh the unmute button okay let me ask to unmute you there you go that should make it easy there you go. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, for me, um, the book boot camp slowed me down mm -hmm. because I was all over. I literally did not know what I was doing. I was just reading into everything and watching videos and I was still was stuck. Mm -hmm. And um, I do appreciate um, you and Director Brown um, teaching us and slowing me down. And I'm not there completely confident in having my backbone, but the more I hear you and I listen and I'm in the Zooms, I'm getting better at it. And Michelle and Norma are amazing with me and patient. So I am grateful that I did this boot camp. Good, good. Thank you, Damaris. That's awesome. Danette? Hello, everybody. Thank you so much. Um, boot camp for me, um, as many of you know, my husband and I did his business together and for most of you who didn't know, he was the one that actually got the invite to do this business. So for me, I always would push back and I'm good at certain things. And this boot camp, um, from where we started, I was kind of deciding if I should really have him take the lead, you know. So for me, um, it definitely that's where I was in the beginning of this boot camp, kind of deciding as the pressure, as we get close to DIT, we're so close to DIT, at least that's our goal for the month. And I kind of like panicked, like, okay, do I really want to have all this work? <laughs> so the boot camp really helped um, to get me in a frame of mind that, well, you know, I know it's about doing it for the people, which I love, but doing the work makes it a lot easier now because you kind of have the steps in which to take. Um, so thank you for that. And thank you for everybody who's always been, you know, pushing through, even though we're not there yet in terms of doing all of the action steps, um, definitely being able to have the blueprint of it all um, mm -hmm. is definitely making. And the one thing I can say today is that we work together, me and Randy, like um, now more than we have before. Um, and that's something that I would say that the bootcamp helped us with particularly because now we can see where, you know, hey, you know, you didn't do this, you know, or you didn't do that. And you can, I'm more patient with him per se. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I'm more patient with him in that way um, because I can understand what he hasn't done mm -hmm. and where we have to get the results. So that's good. That's good. Thank you. That's great. Latoria. Uh, so she's going to go live. Latoria is going to go live. Um, so yes. Uh, Michelle. Hello again. Um, I want to thank both you, Director Burke and Director Brown for doing this boot camp. 
and me being a part of this boot camp, I can definitely say it's got me to be more organized and understand the importance of a schedule and writing things down um, and to have a calendar um, that is like you can, it's tangible, you can look at it or the digital. And I use both because the digital helps me um, with the reminders, the, you know, the, the alerts. Mm-hmm. So that's why I like the digital as well. Um, so the organization in that um, helped. And then um, more confidence, I would say, um, since I've been in the boot camp, more confidence in this and more, a better understanding of the process of, you know, how this, how this goes. And so it's more, it makes me more confident to believe that I can do this. So I'm grateful. So thank you again, both. You're welcome. You're welcome. Divorce. Okay. Um, for me, it definitely helped me zone in on my DMO and get my calendar together. Um, that is, seems to be ever changing, but each week I kind of adjust it um, to deal with my uh, with other things that have going on in my life. Mm-hmm. But I'm excited because I have really been consistent at um, getting three ways in. Um, I had to um, just really like unlearn a really bad habit. And I just had to make sure that I'm able to really schedule the um, three ways the next day. I'd be like, okay, what's the next day? I mean, that's worked out better. And it's like, that's gonna make a big difference. Um, and then when the director, director Brown um, said today having three people, at least three people, and I do have at least three people that I can run to. And then someone that I can probably run to if it's in a put pinch. But I was always in the, in the situation where I had a lot of anxiety around getting a three-way because of how I was taught. So now I'm just like, you know what? I got to get to this next level. And so I need to know that I have, I can count on people who will answer my call, who will, um, you know what I'm saying? That will be accessible and dependable. I just had to drop the anxiety. So I'm excited about that. I mean, I've been on, I've been on uh, <laughs> Director Brown's calendar, right? Director Brown? <laughs> That's good. <laughs> that's excellent excellent I'm proud of you divorce that's awesome I, I love you. hearing from divorce because she's been in the business uh for years and so for her to be in the boot camp and have learned something even though she's been in it for years that's that's a blessing so thank you divorce um Miss Laura I'm going to find my mute button. Okay. So for me, um, first of all, thank you so much for this platform. I like this boot camp um, for me because the anxiety of being booted out was lifted. So I wasn't so worried about making a mistake, making sure it was like, because that was giving me anxiety. Did I do everything? I would look at the play in previous boot camps like nine, six, seven, eight times over, and I would still make mistakes. And then I would still get booted out. And so relieving all that pressure kind of gave me the opportunity to kind of take this for exactly what it was at a learning process, because on the travel side, I feel that I'm a beast for what I need to make financially. So I'm going to, and I kept on saying to myself, well, why is my travel side not matching my planet side? And where am I making mistakes? Because I'm doing everything, right? So when I sat down and I really looked at the numbers and I did the comp plan backwards to what I need to make and then kind of figure out how many people I need. When, when I sat down and looked at the numbers, it turns out on a whole, I'm not doing as much as I should be doing because here I'm thinking I'm doing what I'm doing, but I'm doing it for the travel end. I'm not doing it for the planet end. And I'm like, oh, well, it should just happen organically because that's how it has happened for me in the past. But being that, you know, last year I had set the goal for a fireball and I missed it, right? So this year I'm like, I'm not missing it. So we need to really get this honed down. So there's quite a few things that I learned in this boot camp. One is that I need to be accountable for myself and my business. Can't blame my director. Can't blame my sponsors. Can't blame. I have to take accountability for myself when it comes to the planet side. So I need to put more time into educating myself on the planet side, which is obviously plugging in more and not being driving when I'm on meetings. And it was just a matter of taking that schedule, that 15 minute schedule and be like, okay, well, how can I make it better? Right. Because I wasn't, I was, I was there, but I wasn't present because I was always doing something else. I was always doing nine different other things. So you had put up a post a few weeks ago about, 
you know, where are you now? I think it was like midway. You put the post about what, what kind of, I said, I was kind of still like, I'm comfortable and I'm confident in my posture, but I feel like I'm still in this like learning zone because I'm still trying to navigate how to make both sides better. Mm -hmm. So now that I kind of have that figured out, I think at this point, I think that it's going to be the way that I have it set up and I have my calendar and I have my content well planned for the next three months out. And I have a clear picture of who I'm trying to attract. Mm -hmm. I think that we might be going a little bit higher than the fireball. So let's just see where we end up. But the fireball is the goal. So if we land above that, then that's great too. I love that. I love that. Thank yeah. you, Laura. That is really, Thank really you. good. And I love yeah, the fact so that thanks. you set income goals. Um, for both sides of your business. So that's great. And Miss Lorna, you got to unmute yourself. Hold on. I, I think I did, right? Yeah, you're good. We can hear you now. Okay. Um, my ears are clogged, so I don't know if I'm speaking too loudly. No, um, you're good. So my biggest thing I think I learned, my I never used to have a paper calendar and now mine is so full, it's like almost illegible. Um, but I do like to keep my calendar on my phone because of the reminders and the pop-ups. Um, I, now I have a big handle on time management because of it. And I, I still struggle with the PS3, um, but now I actually walk with a, a, a special book for um, prospects. Mm -hmm. So that's been helping me. And um, I think I'm a little bit more comfortable to approach people because of this, but um, I still struggle. Like if I get the no's, I don't know how to keep pushing a little bit to see if I can turn that no into a, a curiosity. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But um, I I my one of my business partner and I plan to do the PBR mm -hmm. and in 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 the home, mm -hmm. but we didn't we didn't set that up yet. But um, from what I hear this evening, I think uh, um, we'll be okay. Um, I mean, I'm nervous as all hell, but um, I think we'll be okay to try it out. Absolutely, feel the fear and do it anyway. And Lorna, I encourage you for anybody who's still struggling with PS3. Go back and watch the Jaffe 2.0. And also let me say this. If someone tells you no, your job is not to try to turn them into a yes. A no is a no. Okay. Just move on to the next person. This is not a convincing business. This is not a begging business. Some people are just not ready for a life change. You, Lorna, are only looking for the people that are ready right now. That's it. That's it. All right? Um, this was awesome. Director Brown, what'd you learn from this? I, you know what? Something that I learned was that even though some of us, we just want to go, right? We just moving, we just going, 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 but taking that time with all of the different, all of the different steps, taking that time with peak and interest, taking that time with how to show the plan, taking that time with going over the three-way call, taking the time to actually go through how to make a DMO, how beneficial this has been for everyone. Because we can give you an onboard and then we can say, okay, you know, look at this and I want you to do this, duplicate this. We're going to do boop, 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 boop. But everybody can't boop, 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 boop. And so for a lot of people, taking that time with each step mm -hmm. is so, so helpful. Even when uh, Damaris said it slowed her down, but that's in a positive because some people will look at slowing down as a negative. But in this instance, that slowing down was a positive because she took the time to figure out, let me focus on this one thing. She said she was watching a whole bunch of different videos. Now you got all this different information from different things, but now I slowed down and I'm learning how to peak interest. I slowed down and I'm learning how to do a PBR. I slowed down and I'm learning and it's gonna take time. Like Lorna says, she's still trying to work on that PS3, but watching the videos over and over and then putting it into action over and over then watching the videos again, then putting it to action. The more you do it, 
the better you're going to become. So my first three ways, of course, you're a nervous wreck, you mess up, but then you learn. So just like anything that we're learning how to do, whether it's, you know, cooking or, you know, riding a bike or whatever, the first few times you might mess it up, but the more you do it, the better you're going to become, you know, even just thinking of Leroy is he's a baker, he bakes, but I'm sure it took him some time to learn how to perfect those cakes. And so it's going to take some time to perfect all of these things. But as long as you keep doing it, keep being consistent, keep peaking interest, keep showing the plan, keep having three-way calls, and then it's going to be, you, you'll be an expert. Now, now you'll be doing three-way calls for your team and showing your team the process that you went through and being able to share your story to help them. So I'm very, very happy to hear that this was so beneficial. I mean, me and Tanisha were super, super excited. What was it? Back in October when we spent time together um, and just mapping out all of this. And we were like, yes, this is going to be so, we were so, so excited. But to have it now happen and having all of this amazing feedback with how much it helped you guys, it makes me feel so, so good. And, you know, I, I know a lot of people mention, you know, thanking us for taking the time out to help you guys, but to see how beneficial it was, this was, this was good time that we spent doing this. So I appreciate all of you guys. Appreciate you, um, Tanisha. This has been amazing. Look at it. Look, you see that in the chat? I see that. This is Planet 101. I love that. I love that. Well, let me share what I've learned. First and foremost, I learned that Director Brown, you are everything that I thought you were and you exceeded my expectation, but I already knew that. So thank you for everything, um, for validating my intuition on you as a leader. So mm -hmm. I thank you for that. And Mr. Bradley has always said, if you put, I don't know if it was Mr. Bradley or Mr. Moore, but if you put a champion in a winning environment, they will find a way to win. And that sounded really good, but I was like, what does that look like? This right here is what it looks like. Director Brown and I created a winning environment that gave you everything that you needed to do to win and to be able to see the MTGs, you know, and it's not even just about the MTGs. The winning environment is, I was scared to death to do the PBR, but I didn't, I didn't die, I executed it. That's a champion winning, you know, oh, I got my first, um, my first three-way call. That's a champion winning. You know, oh, I finally stuck to my schedule. That's a champion winning. Oh, I'm, you know, I may not have hit all my weekly goals for peaks, exposures, and three ways, but I did hit the goal for the peaks. I got that. That's my first time. That's a champion winning. And so now I get it. When you put a champion in a winning environment, they will find a way to win. So each and every one of you are champions. And I need you to believe that because you prove that to yourself. It wasn't about proving it to Director Brown. It was you having the proving it to yourself so that you can increase your posture and say, you know what? I could do this business. I got it now. The other thing that I learned, Director Brown, is there may be times where we as leaders think that someone's not hungry. And it's not that they're not hungry, it's that they're confused. Because of something that they heard someone tell them that they should do or do it this way, do it that way. And so I think as a leader, it just reinforces to me, don't count people out. Don't assume that they're not hungry, but to ask better questions about, well, what exactly is it that you're doing? Like you're telling me you're peaking, but what the, show me what that looks like for you. Because it could just be that they learned. And I heard someone, I heard, I think two of you mentioned you had to unlearn some bad habits that were taught to you. I picked up on that. I know Devorah said it. 
learn, unlearn some bad habits that were taught to you. Not because someone intentionally taught you something, but you don't know what you don't know. And none of us have been in this position before leading teams. So yeah, we're going to make a lot of mistakes. Sometimes we're going to teach you something that's wrong until we know better to do better. So again, always show your leaders grace in, in that point. I ha we have some amazing leaders. My leaders are the bomb.com, all of them. All of my leaders are the bomb.com. They all bring something to the table. Some are stronger in some areas and you know not so strong in others, but they're all committed to their personal development and growing and wanting to help. Um, so as leaders, as you all develop into leaders and you start, you know, as you're growing your team, always give your downline, your business partners, the benefit of the doubt and take the time to ask the right questions to find out exactly what are they doing. Don't let them just give you a surface answer. You're going to have to kind of role play with them and say, okay, you're telling me you're peeking, peek me. What does that look like? Or pull it up on your phone. Because there, there are some people who have learned some bad habits. Um, not that they were wrong, but what, have, what do I always say now? There's just better ways to do things to have better outcomes. And that's all what we, we all want. We all want better outcomes. So those are the things that I have learned. Um, just a reminder, my YouTube channel, I've made it easy and uploaded all of these training videos on my YouTube channel, Lifestyle by Tanisha. There is a separate playlist that says 40 days, 40 nights, what the work looks like. And every video from our training is there. So now you can take that and walk your people through, your new people or whoever, through that this boot camp for them. So it's a great way to get people um, off and running in the right direction and learn everything the right way the first time. So they won't have to unlearn. You did the hard work for them by going through this boot camp. So now there won't be any bad habits that they have to unlearn because you're going to be able to teach them the right way from the beginning. And what a perfect time to do that during this season as we go into momentum. So congratulations to everybody. Um, this week, everybody stay in the group because this week, Director Brown and I are going to be evaluating everybody. And we're going to go live in the group and let you know who won some prizes. Um, so I don't want you to miss that announcement of who won the prizes. And I don't know how many there's going to be. I don't know, me and her, we're going to talk about it. But um, some of you are definitely uh, very worthy of recognition um, because you went from about to quit to now you're flourishing. So any closing comments, Director Brown? You get closing comments. I'm just really proud of everyone, like really, because I know what it's like to be frustrated. I know what it's like to be confused and want to give up, but you like, no, I can't give up. I got to keep going. I got to keep pushing. And so I was one of those people that kept pushing, but there's many people that don't keep pushing and they give up. They, and some people give up way quicker than other people, but you guys continue to push through every single week. And I think the faces that we see now are the faces that have been on every single week, not just on the Sundays, but even, you know, the, the during the week trainings, I'm seeing these same faces and these same names that have been here every single week. So just know that your hard work and your dedication has not gone unnoticed. We see it, even though there's, what is it like 300 and something people in that group, we see the people that are showing up and that are super, super dedicated. So I'm proud of you. And there's many people that are going to be watching this recording that are not on, of course, it's Super Bowl Sunday. They weren't able to make it. And we've noticed those people as well. So I'm proud of y'all. Just keep going. Always, always remember why you're doing this. On those days when you're frustrated, on those days when you want to give up, go back to your why. Why did you start this in the first place, right? So like Felicia said there, I went through some health issues when I first got started. And people say, well, how were you able to keep going? 
my why. My why is what kept me going every single day. So keep that in front of you. Keep going. Don't ask questions. If I mean, do ask questions. So if you're really, really, truly confused and you like, I don't know what's going on, reach out and ask for help. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Proud of you guys. Um, I'm, I'm excited, but I'm also sad that it's ending as well. It is kind of sad. It is. <sighs> I, know. <laughs> I feel like we gave birth and now our kids are leaving the, the right. house. We're going to be empty nesters. <laughs> we are <just> so <laughs> but thank you, everyone. This concludes 40 Days, 40 Nights, What the Work Look Like. Congratulations, everyone. Let's give yourselves mm -hmm. a round of applause. Y'all did that. Thank, did you. That. Y thank you. Thank you. Amazing. And You're stay welcome. tuned. Stay tuned in the group to see who won. We'll share that um, over the next five days. We'll share who won. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Good night, everyone. Bye. Good night.